Welcome to my channel. We're going to value three REITs and look at their financial ratios. The first one is Alexandria Real Estate. This company invests in office buildings and laboratories that are leased to companies in the life science and technology industries. It has a market cap of $21 billion, so it's a large cap company. They're trading just under $170 a share. And the way you calculate shares outstanding, you take the market cap divided by the stock price. That gives you shares outstanding, 124 million. We're gonna need this number later because we're gonna calculate the value of the company. Then we have to divide that by the shares outstanding to get the calculated stock price. Let's look at their financials. Free cash flow, this is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that back to today's dollars. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if you have positive free cash flow, that means you generated more cash than you spent. That's what you want to see when you invest in a company. Although they could have negative free cash flow if they're investing in their business looking to grow it later on. But this company has positive, consistent, growing free cash flow each year, which is great to see. They also have pretty good net income. One year they had negative net income. Net income is the profit and loss of the company, and this is accounting profit and loss. So there could be accounting tricks in there. So you have to look at the income statement to make sure you understand everything. The revenue is the sales for each year, and it seems to be growing at a pretty good rate. So everything looks good so far. The total debt is $6.8 billion, and they pay 2.5% interest on the debt. 43% of that capital structure is debt, which means 57% is equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a beta of 0.78. So the stock is a little less volatile than the market. The lower the beta, the lower the cost of equity. And their cost of equity is 8.3%. We use the capital asset pricing model to figure that out. Their WAC, the weighted average cost of capital is 5.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. That's how much money it costs this company to obtain debt and equity financing. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, that's all cash flows past year four, that's $15 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $15 billion. We divide that by 124 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $120. They're trading at 170, so they're trading at a 41% premium, so it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 185, so they're saying the stock is a buy. They're saying it's undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like the price keeps going up and it's almost at its all time high. So it doesn't look like it's a good value, but according to Simply Wall Street, it is just not my model. Let's look at their financial ratios. Their PE is 57.8. The median in the market's 15. That's a really bad PE. Price to sales of 13.7. The median is 1.8. That's a bad ratio of 13.7. You want a low price of sales. They do have a good price to book. It matches the median in the entire market. And the price to earnings is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 58. So investors are paying $58 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. And to calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 13.7. So investors are paying $14 for $1 of sales. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 2.4, I like to see below 3.5. So investors are paying $2.40 for $1 book value. This is a good ratio. Whenever you look at a REIT, you should look at the price of stock over funds from operations per share. This is a better ratio than price to earnings for REITs. Funds from operations is net income plus depreciation and amortization minus the gain on sale of real estate. And their funds from operations per share is $7.40 and the price of stock over funds from operations per share is 23. So investors are paying $23 for $1 of funds from operations. I like to see below 15 for this ratio. They have a bad current ratio. The median in the market is 1.3.
They have a good interest coverage ratio of 2.5. The median in the market is 4.1. And their ROE is 4%, which isn't good. The median is 13%. The average is 8%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, which means they may need to take on more debt. I like to see between 1.2 and 2 for this ratio. ROE is net income over equity, and they're at 4%, so they're not providing good value to the equity holders. I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 2.5. I like to see above 2.0. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Innovative, Prologis, Public Storage, and Stag, all in the same industry as Alexandria. For the price of a funds from operations per share, Stag has the best ratio. Alexandria is 23.0, which is better than average. And for PE, price to sales and price to book, they're better than average. Anything in green is better than the average in industry. If it's in red, it's worse than the average. So they're worse in current ratio, ROE, debt, and market cap. They're a little smaller than average in market cap. The average is 27 billion because Prologis is so big. The second read is Weyerhaeuser. This company owns 12.4 million acres of timberlands in the US and 14 million acres in Canada. It also manufactures wood products. This is also a large cap company at 21.7 billion market cap. They're trading just under $30 a share. And they do have positive consistent free cash flow so that's good the net income is also pretty good although they had one year of negative net income and their revenue was growing from 2016 to 2018 but dropped in 2019 but the numbers look pretty good as long as you have positive consistent numbers it makes it much easier to value a company they have 6.4 billion dollars of debt and they pay 5.9 percent interest on the debt and the cost of debt is 4.8%. To calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they have 44% of debt in the capital structure. I like to see below 50%. That means they have 56% equity. And to calculate the cost of equity, we need the beta. They have a beta of 1.96, so the stock moves twice as much as the market. So it's a bit volatile. The higher the beta, the higher the cost of equity and their cost of equity is pretty high at 17.4%. Their WAC is 11.9%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, that's 12.2 billion. That's all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weight average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $11 billion. We divide that by 729 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $15. They're trading at $30, so they're trading at 95% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. So they say the stock is valued at $29, pretty much what they're trading at. Simply Wall Street always seems to be a little higher than me, in this case a lot higher. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it was in the mid-30s for a while. Then coronavirus came and it dropped, but it's right back to where it was pre-coronavirus. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a negative PE, a decent price of sales, and a good price to book. So PE is stock price of earnings per share. They have negative net income in 2019, so they have a negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they have 3.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.7. And price of stock over funds from operations per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 38. Current ratio is good, interest coverage ratio is decent, and a bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on American Tower, Crown Castle, Cyrus One, Hannon Armstrong, Iron Mountain, Power Reed, and SBA Communications, all in the same industry as Weyerhaeuser. And if Weyerhaeuser has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. In terms of price over funds from operations per share, they are worse than the average at 38, the average is 34. Iron Mountain is best at 12.3. They have a negative PE, so we can't look at that. 
Their price of sales and price to book is better than the average in the industry. Current ratio is worse than average, but they're above one, so that's okay. Negative ROE, so they're worse than the average. They have the lowest amount of debt, which is good. And in terms of market cap, they're lower than average, but they're still a pretty big company at $22 billion. The third and last REIT is Well Tower. This company invests in assisted living centers and medical office buildings. It also owns hospitals and other healthcare properties outside the US. They're also a pretty big company, market cap $25.5 billion. They're trading at a little over $60 a share. They have really good free cash flow. It's consistent and really strong, averaging about $1.5 billion a year. Their net income also looks really good, consistent and positive, and their revenue is going up every year. So they have the best financials of the three companies. They have $14.9 billion of debt. They pay 3.5% interest on their debt and 49% of that capital structure is debt. That means 51% is equity and the bait is 0.83. So the stock moves a little less in the market. So that's good. It's a low volatile stock. The cost of equity is low, 8.69% because they have a low beta. And their WAC is 6.17%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 27 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company at $29 billion. We divide that by 222 million shares. And we get a calculate stock price of $68. They're trading at $60, so they're trading at 11% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at $88, so they're saying it's even more undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So it has a low beta, so you can see it's been pretty steady for the past few years, but it did drop a lot of coronavirus. So it definitely seems like an undervalued stock because it probably will eventually come back to pre-COVID levels. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a decent PE, a decent price of sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, there are 21. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, there are 5. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, there are 1.6. And price over funds from operations per share. I like to see below 15, there are 15.46, so that's a good ratio. They have a bad current ratio, a bad ROE, and a bad interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, so they probably need to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity, and they don't provide a good value to the equity holders. I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can just cover their interest payments, but they don't have that much room. I like to see above 2.0 in this number. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on LTC properties, medical properties trust, National Health Investors, and Omega Healthcare. Wall Tower is here at the end. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. In terms of price over funds from operations per share, they're worse than the average at 15.5, average is 12.8. They're worse than the average in PE. They do have the best price to sales ratio, which is good. They're better than the average in price to book, but they are worse than the average in current ratio and ROE. All the companies are pretty tight in the area of debt. They're at 49%, which is just about average. And they're the biggest company of the five at 26 billion market cap. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll definitely answer. And if you wanna see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.